Hello again. Now, bought this a couple of days ago, new guitar, found a Stratocaster. Uh, been after a Strat for a, for a while, been shopping around and finally settled on this one. It's the Fender standard Strat. And while I was sort of doing the research into you know, which particular model of Strat that I wanted, I realised there's just so many similar guitars out there, often from sim sim the same manufacturer but at a whole range of different price points and I thought it would be an interesting subject for a video just to talk about why it is that, you know you can see so many guitars that look ostensibly the same why some are more expensive than others why some cheaper than others I'm going to talk in general terms but the Fender range is probably a good place to start because Fender cover everything from the beginner market with the Squires right the way through the Fender, it's like the standard range, it's actually got Fender on the headstock uh, to the top end stuff like the Fender Custom Shop and within you know, any one of those those ranges the subdivision, so you get like the Squire Affinity range, the Squire Classic vibe, you get these standard strats that are made in Mexico they also make strats in America, they get the deluxe range and then you get the Custom Shop, all these different ones and basically Fender, you know, any guitar company, at the end of the day, they're a business. And if there's somewhere in the market where there's an opportunity to sell instruments, then they'll be looking to exploit that market. So, yes, there's people who have a budget of a couple of hundred pounds, want a, a relatively cheap instrument, so there's something for, down in that end of the range for them. Up the high end, there's people who are working as professionals, who can justify spending you know, a lot of hundreds if not thousands of pounds on a guitar and there's all the points in between. Like any business, they'll try and make a product for that price point if they think they can sell it. So what makes the difference between a cheap guitar and a more expensive guitar? All sorts of factors. Let's start off with the most basic one, which is probably the quality of the materials used. Now the wood used is uh, an important factor in differentiating between the cheap guitars and the more expensive guitars. Basically the way it works in guitar factories is they will bring in a whole load of timber and then the best timber gets taken for the higher end instruments. You know this is in terms of the, just the general quality of it uh, as a tone wood and also how it looks visually. Now, if you've seen some of like the high-end Paul Reed Smith private stock guitars, they've got some absolutely stunning quilted maple flame maple tops. You know, the, the, the guys there sp spend an awful lot of time when the wood comes in, picking out the best examples and putting that to one side for the very high-end high -end instruments. <clears throat> and then as they go down the range, the wood pile gets less and less in terms of size and quality. The guys sort through it. So if you think about somebody working in like the custom shop end of things, they've got the entire wood stock to sort through to pick out the very best. Right the way down the bottom of the range, basically the wood that they've got is what's left. Less wood, they just do basic quality control and whatever meets the standard gets kept and gets used in guitars. Now it takes time to sort through that wood and also the, the better quality wood because you're dealing with something that comes from nature, it's a kind of a finite um, supply. There's only so much really, really nice flame maple going around at any one time. So that has a, a price associated with it that reflects its its scarcity. If you think about a, a lower end uh, guitar, the guys making it will go to the wood pile, take a piece of wood for making a neck or a body, whatever, and it gets used in the process. There's less care and attention taken to selecting the timber. If you go back to the, the custom shop where they've got the, the best wood that's already been selected from what comes into the factory, but they'll still go through that again and find the best piece of wood for a given job, make sure that the wood they use for the body and the wood that they use for the neck work well together acoustically and the wood will be prepared in such a way that any figuring or, or, or nice grain on the, on the wood is placed as in the best place possible on the guitar to show it off, whereas I say the lower end, you know, would get taken off the shelf and used just used to manufacture a guitar. Now sometimes that works to your advantage, because if there's a certain standard of, of wood that goes into the, the particular range of guitar that you're that you're buying, 
in the factory someone's just gone picked a piece of wood off the shelf and used it to make a neck or whatever now you might get lucky that actually the piece of wood that they got had some really nice grain or, or what have you and that's the bit of wood that gets used on the guitar that you buy so you could often find two or three guitars from the same range from the same manufacturer side by side one might have a really nice piece of wood used for the neck or the body one maybe is not so it's just kind of the look of the draw how it comes off the how it comes off the shelf yeah this guitar is a good example um, I've seen more expensive versions of the Fender Strat which didn't have as nice looking necks I don't think the fingerboard's quite going to show up on the on the camera but there's some really nice figuring some nice grain in the in the wood basically I got lucky the the piece of wood that they used for this was quite pretty also the way that the manufacturers use the wood um, affects the so the cost effectiveness of the process. Now a higher end guitar generally will have a one piece body. As you go down through the, the price ranges typically you'll have two or three or possibly even more pieces of wood in the body. I happen to know that underneath the, the paint and the lacquer this is a two piece body so there's a join down the middle there two pieces of wood joined together. Aesthetically, you can't tell because it's got paint over it. It becomes more of an issue if you get something that's got a like a finish. So, like on the Telecaster, there where you can actually see the grain. That one there, it's a one-piece top, so you can't see any join in the timber. And that's that's really nice, but it's more expensive to get one huge piece of wood than it is to get two smaller pieces, just because of the, the way that wood's cut from a from from a log. So, if you look at a, a lower end guitar chances are it'll have maybe a three piece body cheaper to get smaller pieces of wood and that does affect the sound a little bit of the uh, there's a whole argument and I've done a video about this before about does wood or guitar hardware affect the way a guitar sounds personally and I know a lot of other people agree with me yes it, I think that it does affect the sound so having a one piece body has a, a better I think acoustics sound and therefore a better amplified sound than a, uh, like a three piece body. There's nothing inherently wrong about using two pieces or three pieces of wood to make a body it's all about what they're doing at a particular price point in the market. Hardware just generally will reflect the price of it, be reflected in the price of the guitar you know whether it's simple and chrome plated like this or it's higher end and simply has got, got, got gold plate on that comes at a cost uh, the material that the hardware is made out of if it's you know like a nice solid brass bridge or is it like a cheaper alloy it's all things that cut that come into the equation for fixing the price of the guitar to manufacture and therefore how much it costs they can sell the guitar on for in, in the marketplace and then the thing about hardware um, quality applies across the board. You know whether it's timber, you know, the the hardware like the machine heads, the the pickups. You know you'll know if you look at um, you know replacement pickups for your guitar. You can pick up some fairly cheap ones, or if you look at some of the the more boutique things from people like Seymour Duncan, Demarzio, and those guys. You know you could be paying a hundred pounds or so, maybe for for one really really nice pickup. And it all comes down to how it's manufactured, the quality of the magnets, the quality of the wire, the, uh, the amount of care and attention that goes into winding the pickups and the amount of quality control that goes on. And that's all eventually reflected in the price of the guitar. So if you buy a, a, you know, a cheaper guitar, it might have you know, less efficient machine heads. They might only be say like a 14 to 1 ratio and they're a lighter alloy and maybe just don't feel so good. Um, the pickups might be a little bit muddier. They're not as well, as such a well-defined sound as you get from from a higher end thing. The level of feature that you get it might just be a stop tail piece, which is cheaper to manufacture than something like a tremolo, or it's going to be something like a vintage Strat style tremolo rather than something that's got like the knife edges or it's it's locking or something because he, he, as you go through the level of sophistication and the level of features that has to get reflected in the price. Now, labour costs an interesting thing to think about as well because where the guitar is manufactured 
they have to pay a wage to the people who are doing the manufacture and it's just a fact, a fact of life that different countries have different costs of living. We're not talking about slave labour or anything like that. It's all purely, it's completely ethical. It's just that the expected hourly wage for somebody working in the United States is higher than the hourly, expected hourly rate for their counterpart working somewhere in the Far East. Which is why guitars manufactured in the United States tend to be more expensive than guitars that are manufactured even in, the, in this case, this is a Mexican strap. This is this is manufactured, you know, not all that far away from the, the Fender factory in in, America, in the United States. But Mexican labor, the the you know the the, the rates of, of labor over there are cheaper, so less manufacturing cost. The people who are making this are cheaper, so it's reflected in the price. And also, we think about what those people are doing, how much time they're actually spending on, on tasks. Quality control is a place where corners, well, I was going to say corners get cut. So it's just, uh, there's different levels of efficiency when, when guys are doing quality control. You know, when a, a guitar comes off the, the production line, for example, we're going to feel how well are the frets set into the, into the fingerboard, are they all level, there's no sharp edges. Now, somebody doing quality assurance can do a very quick check you can just pick the guitar off the off the rack, run the hand down the neck, don't feel any sharp edges. It goes back into the production into the production process and continues on. If they run that down the hand down the neck, get a few sharp edges, think well, yeah, that's that's not good enough. So it goes back up the chain for the problems to be addressed. Now there's only a certain granularity of defect that you can uh, identify why by doing a quick check like that, something that takes a few seconds isn't as going to be as thorough as somebody say on like a custom shop production line who they actually go down and fret by fret they will feel, make sure it's it's smooth and the edges are, are, are well rounded off and time is money. You know somebody's just doing a quick quick check like that they can you know take them a few seconds they can do an awful lot of guitars in an hour somebody is going down and checking each individual fret end it's going to take them a minute or so to do each guitar, so they're going to be able to employ more people to do the same number of guitars in an hour, or they make less guitars and scarcity means price goes up. It's all economics. Interestingly, as well as compromises at the manufacturing end of, end of things, you get compromises at the retail end where you come to buy the guitar. Now I believe, in my personal opinion, that if you go and you pick a, a guitar in a guitar shop that guitar should be set up properly it should be you know set up is a very personal thing some people like a higher action than others some people prefer a lower action and so on but it should be a good standard sort of setup on that instrument and it's not always the case guitars come in as they were set up in the factory and some shops will just put them on the racks really they should have somebody in store working to set the, set the guitars up and get the most out of them. This is, you know, is a good example. I bought, I'm not going to say who I, which shop I actually bought it from. But there were a fairly established retailer. And when I picked it up, I felt the action on this guitar is really, really high. Even, I'd like a, a slightly higher action, but it was felt really high to me. But looking at it, it was just the way the guitar was set up. I could immediately look at the bridge and say, well, those saddles have been set way too high. Two few seconds, I can drop the action. It's going to be, it's going to play fine. But having the guitar not set up properly, yes, it saves the the shop a little bit of money in the short term because they're not having to pay an in-store technician to do lots and lots of work. But it must cost them sales because if you if you're not so savvy with guitars, you pick a guitar up and think this feels awful, not be aware that you can change the setup yourself, and it'll go back on the rack and the, and the shop's lost the sale. So it's something to bear in mind when you try and guitar in the shop. You know, how much of the way the guitar feels is just to do with the setup? Is it something that possibly you could tweak, your, tweak yourself? And that brings me on to another uh, point, which is when you're coming to buy a guitar, always, always, always see the guitar in person and play it if you possibly can. You know, it's very tempting in this, the day, these days of the World Wide Web 
to shop around online you know, some of the big box retailers and just buy the guitar blind because as I've said before about you know the the quality of the wood that gets used sometimes you can get lucky about the you know the the figuring in the in the wood that's used or or whatever you get one that's come through the quality control you know where the quality control uh, criteria are such that you know you could get something through that's really really good or you could get something that maybe is not so good but as long as it makes a grade you know it, it'll, it'll, it'll continue through the manufacturing process so if you get two or three guitars where the you know that the quality control standard is quite broad you know you could pick up one guitar and it's got a few slightly annoying sh not sharp but annoying annoyingly prominent fret ends the guitar same guitar range next to it could have a perfectly smooth neck just because the way because of the vagaries in the manufacturing process so having the ability to sit down the opportunity to sit down and actually play the guitar and feel and feel it is, is good because you know what it is that you're getting you know even if you you know you've played a guitar that your friend's got and it feels absolutely fine and then you mail order or off the internet exactly the same model of guitar, same colour, same spec, same everything from the same retailer, you might find that yours isn't as good because possibly within that price point the the quality control is a little bit more variable. So bottom line is if you get the chance to play a guitar before you buy it, do take that opportunity. Now the guitar that you choose, your choice is always going to be a compromise I think between your budget and your aspirations. You know, um, I bought this one, it's a Fender standard Strat, but it's the Mexican range. Uh, I would have loved a nice high-end uh, American standard or even a custom shop, but I know that the Strat's never going to be my main guitar. Um, the Thompson there, that custom-built one, that's always going to be my number one guitar. It's much more my style of guitar. Uh, Strat's a, a nice thing to have, but I couldn't justify spending a huge amount of money on it because I know it's not going to get the sort of mileage um, that something of a higher price point would, would, would justify. But conversely, because I'm used to playing some fairly high-end guitars like the Thompson you know, and other ones I've come across, I know that if I got a, a, something lower down the range I'm not going to be so happy about the feel or the build quality or the sound out of the pickups or whatever. So something like the, the Mexican Standard Strat was a good compromise in my, in my case. But ultimately that choice of what guitar you buy and how much you pay for it, it's a, it's a personal thing. You no, know, if you came to me and said, you know, how much should you be paying for a guitar? You know, there's no real right or wrong answer to that, it all comes down to it depends. If you're a professional working musician and this is the tool of your trade, this is how you make your money, keep food on the table, roof over your head, then yes, you'd be justified in spending more money to get a professional quality instrument, really well built, well, really solid, best pickups you can get. It's going to give you a good sound. And if, you, if you're making money out of music sufficiently to be able to do that, then that's great. But if you're just working in a, you know, a, a club band and your day job is you know, working in you know, flipping burgers in the local fast food joint, you're not going to have that sort of income to be able to buy a really expensive guitar. And you need some sort of compromise. Now I've seen some really, really good guitar players you know, they work really hard, they're playing in the bars and the pubs and the clubs and something like a Squire Strat that they've stuck a new set of pickups in and they just play the heck out of that guitar and it works really well for them and it's within their, within their budget as a, you know, like a lower end of the market working musician rather than a high-flying professional. It's all, it's all a case of, all a case of compromise. You've also got the option as well, once you've bought your guitar to be able to replace bits of it, to upgrade it, to change it, to make it look more like how you want your guitar to be. For example, you could replace the pickups, you could upgrade the hardware. And that's something I think ultimately I might end up doing with this. It's a lovely guitar, plays really nicely, but I can see sooner or later maybe getting a nice perloid scratch plate for it, maybe some gold hardware. I might do it, I might not. It's it's but I've got I know I've got the option options open to me. I'm not gonna be messing around with a really really expensive guitar so if I want to take a screwdriver to it and you know replace a few parts it's not such a big deal but one way you can get caught out um, by these manufacturers who use 
um, we cut a few corners uh, to keep the price of the instrument down is that they can use uh, like non-standard parts. Now I know if I come to replace, um, for sake, I want to put a new, some new hardware on this, replace it with gold, I'm going to need some new uh, scratch plate screws. Now I know that these are going to be the same as the standard fender screws, so I can go to a, a parts retailer and say I want some fender spec, standard spec, gold scratch plate screws, and I know that they're going to fit. What you might find with some of the other manufacturer, manufacturers who are really working to a budget is that they'll just use whatever screws they can get cheapest. Now they may be a bit bigger than you would normally find on a on a like as a standard or a little bit smaller, whatever. But if you come to replace, say, like a screw, you might find that the this standard screw you replace it with it's rattling around in the hole a little bit because the whole the screw that was originally on the guitar wasn't a standard size and you have to fiddle around a little bit to, to make the, the standard stuff work. Just little things like that can catch you out. So hopefully that explains a little bit about why there's such a difference in price between different guitars. Like I say, ostensibly ones that look the same. If you look through the Fender catalogue you will see so many guitars that look like this. Different colours, but it still just looks like a Strat but they've done something along the way in the manufacturing process to either add or take away stuff to keep it at the right price point that they want to sell that guitar at. So, hope you found that interesting. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in another video next time. Bye for now.